muscles and ligaments. It serves as inlet to the trachea and functions in phonation and airway protection. There are nine cartilages divided as paired and unpaired. The paired are arytenoid, corniculate, cuneiform, and unpaired, epiglottis, thyroid, cricoid. And the muscles are divided into intrinsic and extrinsic muscles, named as the intrinsic muscles uh, cricothyroid, transverse arytenoid, oblique arytenoid, uh, lateral cricoarytenoid, posterior cricoarytenoid, uh, vocalis, and thyro. Uh, 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 Thyroarytenoid. Sir, uh, these cartilages are uh, joined uh, by ligaments, membranes, and synovial joints. They are suspended by hyoid bone via thyrohyoid ligament and membrane. Uh, the largest is the thyroid uh, cartilage, uh, the superior thyroid notch, and associated laryngeal protuberance in the thyroid cartilage. It's an important landmark for percutaneous airway technique and laryngeal nerve block. The cricoid. The cricoid forms the complete ring at the level of C6. It forms the inferior limit of the larynx. It prevents gastric aspiration during rapid sequence uh, intubation. It is connected to the thyroid cartilage by cricothyroid membrane. The arytenoid cartilages, they articulate with the posterior cricoid and are posterior uh, attachment of the vocal cords. The uh, epiglottis forms the anterior wall of the laryngeal inlet and functions to divert food away from the larynx during swallowing. Its anterior surface attached to the upper border of the hyoid bone by hyoepiglottic ligament. The laryngeal inlet is bound laterally by eriepiglottic fold, posteriorly by corniculate cartilage and interarytenoid notch. Uh, inside the laryngeal cavity, the ventricular folds, also known as false vocal cords and vestibular fold, are the most superior structure within the laryngeal cavity. Below that uh, is the true vocal cords. They are present uh, they, uh, in the laryngeal cavity below the vestibule fold and they attach to the thyroid anteriorly and arytenoid posteriorly. The space above the vocal cords is known as vestibule and below the vocal cord is subglottis and at the level of vocal cord is called glottis. The trachea begins at the level of cricoid uh, 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 below the cricoid cartilage uh, and extend till the carina. During inspiration, the vocal cords are in the abducted position to decrease the resistance to the airflow. During expiration, the vocal cords are in slightly adducted position to increase the resistance. It causes physiological peak and expiratory pressure, which is important for vocalization and uh, coughing. And it also prevents airway and alveoli collapse during expiration and maintains function residual capacity. The intrinsic muscles are supply, uh, are innervated by superior laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve. They are branches of the 10th, that is vagus nerve. The superior laryngeal nerve divides into external laryngeal and internal laryngeal nerve. The external Laryngeal nerve, it supplies the cricothyroid muscle. The internal laryngeal nerve, it supplies the mucosa above the vocal cords. The recurrent laryngeal nerve, it innervates all the internal muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid and it supplies the mucosa below the vocal cord. Uh, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, uh, the left and right, they have a different course. The left uh, uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve, it coils around the aortic arch, while the right recurrent laryngeal nerve, it coils uh, in the, uh, b uh, around the uh, right subclavian artery. In the, uh, superior laryngeal nerve injury, uh, which, can, uh, which can happen due to neck or thoracic injury uh, and uh, endotracheal intub uh, intubation, viral infection, thyroid carcinoma or lung carcinoma or thyroidectomy. Uh, so when the superior laryngeal nerve uh, injury occurs, there is a change in quality of voice, the loss of vocal stamina, and uh, when the recurrent laryngeal uh, nerve injury occurs, which uh, can also be called uh, uh, ca caused by neck or thoracic lesion, uh, uh, the thoracic carcinoma during thyroidectomy surgery, and uh, the trauma and neurotoxins. Uh, uh, and uh, it is of two types, unilateral and bilateral. In unilateral injury, the vocal cords are in uh, the, uh, uh, 
द सेम साइड वोकल कॉर्ड आर इन दी मीडियन और पैरा मीडियन पोजिशन देर इज हॉर्सनेस ऑफ वॉइस वीक कफ नो एयर वे ऑब्सट्रक्शन एट रेस्ट बट देर आर इंक्रीज चांसेज ऑफ एस्पिरेशन एंड द कंपनसेटरी हाइपर एडिक्शन ऑफ द अपोजिट कॉर्ड अलाउ एडिक्वेट वोकल फंक्शन इन दी बायोलेटरल रिकरेंट लेरेंजल नर्व इंजरी देर इज कंप्लीट ग्लॉटिक क्लोजर इट रिक्वायर्स इमीडिएट ट्रैक्योस्टमी बायोलेटरल वोकल कॉर्ड्स इन बायोलेटरल वोकल कॉर्ड्स आर इन द कैडेवरिक पोजिशन देर इज हाई गैस्ट्रिक एस्पिरेशन रिस्क एंड वी कैन ऑल्सो हियर स्ट्राइड और स्पेशली ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन so that's it sir finished okay right uh, so these are common this uh, various fallacies are commonly asked in the examination repeatedly asked and uh, the applied anatomy of larynx as such is also a very important thing uh, because uh, the question is worded uh, this time as uh, larynx and uh, the various nerve palsies if the question is asked to uh, describe the anatomy and the applied anatomy of larynx to anesthesia you may have to talk about uh, cricothyroid anatomy also okay because there is a cricothyroid membrane which is present in emergency front of neck axis the uh, importance of uh, doing a cricothyroid anatomy is very useful and how you identify that uh, gap uh, talk about what is called levitans laryngeal shake or hand shake and then uh, marking it so that you can open it up and, and how to manage the various vocal cord palsies what are all the importance as you rightly said when to plan for uh, tracheostomy uh, or even a tracheotherotomy may be useful to save the patient's life so bilateral partial injury is the most dangerous injury which will cause the vocal cords to come into total adduction and no air flow can occur the patient will choke to death uh, whereas a total bilateral injury produces what is called the cadaveric position where there is a small opening is present so breathing may not be that much strenuous but the chances of aspiration are very high whereas unilateral injuries both partial and total uh, may produce uh, minor difficulties like change in voice or uh, change in uh, difficulty in breathing only when heavy exercise or uh, rapid respiration is taking place and you must be in a position to draw the diagrams of these various things and uh, so i'll just show you uh, mm -hmm. uh, so the anatomy of the larynx is a cartilaginous segment of the respiratory tract is located in the anterior aspect of the neck that is the description of larynx it is about 4 to 5 cm in length and width with slightly shorter antero posterior diameter the location is very important it is located at uh, between c4 to c7 with tibra and is held in position by muscles and ligaments and the superior most region of the larynx is the epiglottis that is attached to the hyoid bone connected to the inferior part of the pharynx and the inferior aspect of the larynx connects to the superior region of the trachea so after the cricoid so the laryngeal skeleton is made up of nine cartilages as we rightly described three unpaired like uh, thyroid cricoid and epiglottis please remember that hyoid bone is not a part of laryngeal anatomy it is even though it is suspending and holding the entire larynx it is not included as part of the anatomy of larynx 
and the three paired cartilages are arytenoid, carnicolate, and cuneiform. So this picture will tell you all the anterior and posterior view, how they are all situated and the uh, thing. And uh, phalanx has got three regions, supraglottis, glottis, and subglottis. So coming to supraglottis, connect the larynx to the base of the tongue, extends up to the ventricle. Subdivisions are epiglottis, area epiglottic fold, erythenoid, false cord, and ventricle. And this knowledge, what are all the structures going to that is uh, important because we are going to see about epiglottitis, which is an infection, which is an acute emergency in a child or an adult. So these structures will be involved when we have an infection like epiglottitis. And they have a mucosal lining, stratified squamous epithelium, rich in lymphatics, which exists through thyroid membrane or jugulotagus nodes and cervical myth more common, metal, metal, metastasis is more common. So this is another point um, view to show how these are all disposed in the various levels. So you can see here the hyoid bone, which is holding the epiglottis attached to that. And it is suspending the whole of larynx more or less. So uh, this is the supraglottic area with the area epiglottic fold, ventricle of morgagni, arytenoid cartilage, all these things are situated above the glottic opening. And subglottic is mainly the cricoid cartilage level. Okay? And that in pediatric patient, that is the narrowest and uh, that is likely to get uh, swollen up and cause an obstruction. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, description of epiglottis is given here. Because, uh, the difference between an adult and pediatric epiglottis is very, very commonly asked in the examination. So you can see how the pediatric epiglottis is like a, a U-shaped and this is more like a leaflet. And uh, very epiglottic fold extends from the arytenoid to the epiglottis, contains articulate and cuneiform cartilage. And it is flabby in laryngomalacia. And the area epiglottic fold, CTC, forms three sphincters during pharyngeal phase of swallowing. Mm -hmm false cord and true cords. So the false cord is thin shelf-like pore partition above the ventricle. So this picture will show you how, uh, actually you can see the letters are all inverted. I have rotated this picture for you to, because this view is very commonly seen by all of you while doing your laryngoscopy. Okay, so you see the anterior commissure, you see the true vocal folds, this is the false vocal folds. So the uh, membrane-like thing which is adjacent to the white pearly structure is the false vocal folds. And this is the esophagus and this is the entrance to the trachea and this is the epiglottis. Okay. So all these things uh, form this uh, structures. And uh, those, this is how the, again another view of how the uh, supraglottis, glottis and subglottic are uh, seen. Now coming to the next part of the larynx glottis, comprises a true cord anterior posterior commissure, rhymoglottis, which is the triangular space between the two vocal cords. So that the triangular opening which I showed in the earlier picture is called rhymoglottis and extends up to one centimeter below free margin of the vocal cords. And this is the narrowest portion in the adult larynx, whereas subglottic area is the narrowest portion in the pediatric larynx. So this is again another uh, picture to show this is the rhymoglottis, the angular opening between the two vocal cords. This is the true vocal cord, this is the vestibule. And you can see the carnicolate cartilages here. And uh, the anterior two-thirds or vocal cords are membranous, which are formed by the vocal ligament and muscle. Posterior one-third is fibrous, vocal process of arytenoids. And vocal cord insert into midline of thyroid cartilage via Broyles ligament. So at the level of insertion, inner perichondrium is absent in thyroid. Broyles ligament limits inferior spread of glottic carcinoma. So any carcinoma of the vocal cord will prevent, we cannot go below the uh, Broyles ligament. And once it is breached, early cartilaginous invasion is very common. 
so that is the importance of uh, 3a larynx which happens uh, especially if the vocal cord and the carcinoma is there the the anterior commission is the area between two cords surface marking of anterior commission is uh, in the male it's the midline between thyroid notch and the lower border so exactly at the mid portion of the thyroid cartilage will be the attachment of the anterior commissure from the if you touch it here you will be able to uh, locate it there and whereas in the female it is the junction of the upper one third and lower one third so in the male it is in the middle almost middle of the thyroid cartilage whereas in the female it is slightly in the higher position and uh, webbing of this anterior commissure can happen more commonly whereas the posterior commissure is the very area between the vocal process and then this is the respiratory portion so posterior commissure scarring mimics bilateral abductor palsy so if there is a scarring occurring with, uh, because of the changes in the vocal fold or the true vocal cord that can also produce a strider like feature and layered microstructures of vocal cords this composed of mucosa lamina propria superficial or a rail key space where edema can occur and there is an intermediate and deep layer and muscular layer what is called thyroarytenoides so what is the muscle present in the vocal cord that they ask you in the exam you have to say that muscle layer is thyroarytenoides so this is the histological picture you can see the <coughs> epithelium this is the lamina propria made up of superficial intermediate and deep layers there are three layers at the mid and there is a vocalis muscle so uh, thyroid nerve is also is called vocalis muscle and the subglottic area is the narrowest portion in pediatric larynx extends up to lower border of carotid cartilage and it has got two parts mobile upper part below the vocal process to upper border of carotid cartilage and the fixed lower part which extends up to inferior part of the carotid cartilage and uh, subglottic stenosis in, uh, more common in pediatric airway due to non expansile ring and lower half dealt by if well, the way you have to know about this subglottic stenosis is that is laryngotracheal stenosis cases the lower half if it is stenosed you can do a resection and anastomosis whereas if the upper half of the subglottic is uh, stenosed it is very difficult but nowadays they put what is called the stent and then try to expand it because the arytenoid limits the resection you can't do a complete resection and anastomosis you can put a stent instead of that and laryngeal cartilages or uh, thyroid cartilage so the name is because it looks like a shield held by the roman soldiers all the just uh, the the scene ben hur and uh, uh, all those type of uh, old movies where uh, roman soldiers fight with the shield so it looks like the shield of that so two lamina fuse in midline to form thyroid prominence in male it is so acute 90 degrees forming the adam's apple whereas in female it is obtuse 120 degrees and there is an oblique line which attached to the strap muscles inferior constrictor is attached to that and uh, post -part, posterior part related to thyroid uh, fossa and uh, cricard cartilage it is a signet ring shaped structure anterior arch is 5 to 7 mm posterior there is a lamina which is 2 to 3 mm and cricothyroid joint related to uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve so this is how the whole thing looks like this is the anterior broad portion this is the posterior narrow portion and uh, this is the relationship to cricoid arytenoid is sitting on that actually it is a epithelial process a vocal process and muscular process so cricoarytenoid joint is also a synovial joint which is articulating like that and uh, arytenoid is a pyramid shaped you can see the whole thing this is a pyramid shaped uh, cartilage and uh, base articulates with cricoid apex articulates with cornicate the another cartilage which is articulating is 
a conucleate and it has got two processes muscular process and vocal process and two surfaces medial and posterior surfaces are there sometimes during intubation or during trauma arytenoid can be fractured or displaced and if arytenoid is fractured majority of the attachment of vocal cord is to the arytenoid so muscles can be divided into intrinsic and extrinsic muscles the extrinsic muscles can be further divided into suprahyoid stylohyoid geniohyoid mylohyoid thyroid and styloflopharynges these are all what is called suprahyoid muscles which can elevate larynx and infrahyoid muscles homohyoid sternohyoid sternothyroid thyroid all these things they lower the larynx so suprahyoid muscles they elevate the larynx and infrahyoid muscles lower the larynx or depress the larynx and they also alter the degree of the shape of the larynx so they are called the extrinsic muscles which act from the outside of the larynx whereas intrinsic muscles control the vocal cord mainly and all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except only one muscle which is trochoid which is supplied by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve so this is how the various intrinsic muscles of the larynx act to produce the various abduction and reduction and their main function is to coordinate phonation respiration cough reflex and also have a sphincter mechanism and uh, the unpaired muscles is only antinoidous and cricothyroid muscle is a tensor of the vocal cord origin cricoid arch insertion into the border of thyroid cartilage it tilts the thyroid forward and cricoid backwards stretching the vocal cords so this is how the whole thing acts and the posterior cricoid is also another muscle which uh, helps that so this picture i thought will be useful for all of you to remember the actions of the various muscles and the nerves that they supply so if you look at the vocal cord this is the anterior this is the posterior aspect when the vocal cords move over this is the arytenoid which is uh, having the attachment and this attachment will be in the front to the thyroid cartilage so you can imagine uh, the middle portion of the thyroid where the anterior commissure is attached as i told you the external surface marking is almost in the midpoint of the thyroid cartilage for male and between the upper one third and lower two third junction in female so the anterior vocal commissure is attached to that and posteriorly it is attached to the arytenoid mm. so when they move away it is abduction when they move towards the midline it is adduction and so what the abductors there's only one abductor which is called the posterior cricoarytenoid and that is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the adductors are uh, the cricothyroid lateral arytenoid intraarytenoid and thyroarytenoid these things four things are called clit clit you can remember that so of that the cricothyroid is only <coughs> supplied by the superior branch of the external laryngeal nerve all the others are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and tensor is the cricothyroid so cricothyroid has mild adductor action as well as tensor action and vocalis is part of the thyroid so that also is another muscle so posterior to clit you see valley that is the uh, <coughs> mnemonic that you can remember so abductor adductor and tensor so is uh, posterior cricothyroid is the abductor okay and the clit the cricothyroid lateral cricothyroid infraarytenoid thyroid nerve are all adductors and you see valley which is cricothyroid and vocal is is tensor yeah so all these uh, things uh, totally there are only 1 2 3 4 five 6 7 muscles which are all intrinsic muscles which are mainly controlling the uh, vocal cord movements whereas the extra, extrinsic muscles 
the infrared and suprahyad they elevate the entire larynx or bring it down according to the necessity and uh, <clears throat> so the now supply all of you know superior laryngeal nerve separates from the vagus just outside the jugular foramen at the inferior vagus ganglion at the level of hyoid and divides into internal and external branches and the internal branch passes through the parahyoid membrane and central innervation of vocal cords and lacrimal laryngeal is a branch of vagus again in the thorax and loops around the aorta which all we have described and there is a law called semans law describes the effects of different injuries to the lacrimal laryngeal nerve and this is the result of relative strength of the adductor muscles to abductor muscles so what does the semans law state it's in a progressive lesion of the lacrimal laryngeal nerve the abductors are paralyzed before the adductors so the abductors when they are paralyzed naturally there will be adduction so vocal cord opening will become narrow this means in incomplete paralysis the cord will be brought to the midline by adductors but in complete paralysis it falls away from the paramedian position okay. and uh, the theories on position of vocal cord paralysis is semen law states that uh, progressive organic lesions abductor fibers of the nerve which are Phylogenetically newer or more susceptible. The reason why the abductors get paralyzed are they are phylogenetically later in, uh, growth. That's the first to be paralyzed uh, compared to the adductor fibers. And there is a Wagner and Grossman hypothesis, which is most widely accepted theory, It states that complete paralysis of recurrent laryngeal nerve results in the vocal cord being in the paramedian because of an intact cricothyroid muscle which adducts the vocal cord and when the superior laryngeal nerve is also paralyzed the vocal cord will be in intermediate or cadaveric position because of the loss of this adductive force so why they go to this paramedian position is because the cricothyroid also is the tensor and adductor as well also completely paralyzed so if the damage is unilateral the contralateral cord can partially compensate and these are all the various uh, adjustments that can happen in partial cricothyroid injury and coming to the blood supply it is mainly from external carotid and superior inferior thyroid arteries and uh, laryngeal arteries venous drainage is by superior laryngeal vein drains into ijv that is a very important communication and the rest is by uh, mid thyroid vein lymphatics above the vocal cord they go to upper deep cervical below the vocal cord lower deep cervical not through pre and paratracheal node and pre laryngeal node and there is no lymphatics in vocal folds that is the beauty of that so this uh, car carcinomas of the vocal cords you can you can get secondaries deposited in the upper deep cervical if it is above the vocal cord and lower deep cervical if it is paratracheal or below then cricothyroidectomy is the making a slit or a small hole anteriorly relatively avascular cricothyroid membrane so this is how you what is called melker percutaneous thyrocricotomy using the seldinger technique that you put a needle and always the direction of the needle should be caudal it should never be superior like that okay all the insertion everything should be towards in the caudal direction and we have this cricothyroidectomy kit available so do not attempt cricothyroidectomy in children as the membrane is not well developed and it can damage the entire trachea okay so, so these are all the things that you can add to this answer